Hey everybody, it's Paul. Welcome back to Epic TCG. We have, you guessed it, another Ultimate Masters box opening here. Got our two video mascots for today. Uh, we went back to Leobold, Emissary of Crest, uh, box topper. Uh, we, you know, just love the artwork on this card. Um, he's like holding out his hand like, hey, let's make a deal, man. Gonna give you something good here. Hoping so. I feel like we have not gotten good box toppers out of the last few of these we've opened. Uh, we've also got Creepy Rudy. If anybody can ward off like evil spirits, it could be him. So, all right. There we go. Those are going to be our two guys. We're just going to like sit those right here. Not that we're suspicious or anything, but you know, we're superstitious, I guess. I am suspicious. I'm suspicious that I may or may not get my money's worth out of this box. So, all right. How are you guys doing? I mean, we're like in the... First week of February, already gone. Super Bowl has been here and gone. Um, hope everybody is doing well. Uh, I've had this weird lingering cold, which I just can't seem to get rid of for the past like week and a half, going on two weeks now. It's weird. It's like, I don't I don't feel bad most of the time, but every now and then, like weird tickle in my throat thing going on. I don't know. All right, there we go. We got a whole mess of packs. 24 of them, hopefully. Our box topper, we'll set that. Set that right there. Rudy can guard that. Leovold can guard the packs. All right, here we go. Let's see what we get today. So, uh, the second wave of Ultimate Masters has hit. It seems to be a very small restock. Um, if you look at TCG Player, um, Frantic Search is our Fohe Celestial Colony. That is a good rare. That's a good start. We will take that all day long. Um, if you look at TCG Player, they have bo more boxes have been have been becoming available, and the price this morning actually dropped a little bit, um, not by much, just by about like five bucks. Uh, but you know, there's like over the weekend, over the past weekend, um, there was like 91 boxes available. Like if you went in and you like counted up all the listings and how many boxes were available, there was like 91 sealed boxes available. Squee goblin. Okay, went from a good rare to a bad rare. And now, all of a sudden, as of the filming of this video, there's like 140 boxes available. Um, and like I said, the price dropped a little bit on boxes down to about uh, about 360 plus shipping, uh, plus tax on TCG Player. So, uh, you know, definitely a little bit of availability, but I think, I think once these are gone, then that's gonna be the end. Seismic Assault, another not so good rare. All right, there we go. All right, I've gotten several comments. I want to respond to them. Uh, I don't have the names of the people who left these. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, just behind on that, we are going to get to some requested videos coming up. But um, people ask, like, hey, why don't you show the commons? Um, honestly, it's because of, to keep the time of the video down a little bit, we just got trolled. That's right. I am trolling you guys with the commons. Slippery Boggle uncommon. Uh, the reason why I don't show the commons is because it just takes up a bunch of time. Uh, there's so much you know, duplication with the commons. Um, there's lots of different lists on there. If you've never seen these cards and you want to see what the commons are, what one of the commons says or something, you can go to like visual spoiler and check those out and stare at those till your heart's content. There's our first mythic of the box people. And you know what? Look at this. Leovold has come through for us. He delivered us a Karn. So good job, Leovold. High five to my elf friend there. Karn liberated. This is like the card right there. I've got I've got a trade binder that I've taken to a couple different uh, card shops. This is the this is the guy that everybody wants. Um, you know, more so than Liliana, more so than Snapcaster. This is the card that like most of the people around me at least are like, I need Karn. So good good start right there. So yeah, anyway, with the commons and you know the young commons, we just don't spend much time on those because you know, hey, they're awesome cards. I am not saying they are not awesome. Uh, it's just just a matter of you know, you, most people are tuning in to see if we are going to get big rares like this guy right here, Ancient Tomb, one of my favorite rares in the set, about twenty bucks still. But it's not taking away anything from the playability of. Here we go, just for you guys. The commons. Not taking anything away from the playability of the commons. I'm actually going to do a video coming up pretty soon here of uh, my favorite commons and uncommons in the set. And you know, th that'll have nothing to do with a financial perspective or anything else. Um, so, but you know, but well, let's just be honest, you know, 
leave a comment here. Uh, you know, are you here to, to see the packs be open and see if I'm gonna make back the price of the box? Or are you here to, you know, to check out the commons? Sovereigns of Lost Alara. It's gonna be hard to make back the value of the box with that guy. All right, hey, uh, let's see. Oh, Dawn Charm and Sigil of the new Dawn, okay. Thought I got duplicate on commons there. Let's see. Demir Guildmage, that's one of my favorite. That's gonna be a little bit of a spoiler for you. Disrupting Troll. Shriek Mabron, Living War. Okay. All right, so lots of stuff going on in the magic community. Man, I'm hearing all kinds of rumors. I, nobody knows what Wizards is gonna do this year. Um, you know, apparently uh, there's gonna be a Kawagama, like returning to Kawagama's a thing. Um, not sure exactly what that's going to look like. Raging Ravine is our rare. Kitchen Fink's good on common. Golgari Thug, even better on common. Um, but supposedly there's going to maybe be some support for, uh, for Pauper. Um, that, I think, would be a ton of fun. Uh, there's also some rumors that maybe we might get a new modern, like a modern 2.0, if you will, uh, which is going to be like some set for some newer set forward. Uh, some people are saying Ixalan, some people are saying um, Return to Innistrad. Um, I don't know, I don't know if that's true or not, but I think that could be really awesome if that's what, uh, if that's what they did. I actually have another suggestion, which I'm gonna get to here, all is dust. All right. Um, I would, I would love it. I would love to see them make a new modern format, so like a modern 2.0 or modern, you know, second iteration, whatever, whatever they want to call it. Modern Liliana's, you know, shoe closet. Um, I would actually love to see them make a new, you know, an expansion to the reserve list. I mean, how cool would that be? Caracas, that's our next mythic, and that's a pretty good one. That's a very, very playable card. Lots of people all want those. I wish it could be played in Commander. Man, do I wish it could be, be played in Commander. Um, I would love to see them expand the reserved list. Like, okay, let's just take, uh, let's take Caracas, just as an example. Now, I get, I honestly and truly, I get the idea that people want, to, want the cards to be accessible. Um, you know, they want the cards to play with, but there's also a financial, you know, implication with opening packs of magic. You know, it, it just is what it is. But how cool would it be if Wizards came out and was like, hey, we're going to put these hundred cards on the reserve list. Caracas maybe being one of them, just, at, just as an example. Gaddock Teague being another one. Leovold being another one. Um, you know, we're putting these on there. How would that change your perception of magic? I want you guys to really think about that for a minute. For me, all of a sudden, that would create an, an absolute immediacy. Because right now I'm thinking like all the sets that are coming out for our standard were like Ravnica allegiances or, you know, return to return to Ravnica. It's like, I feel no, I feel like I've got all the time in the world to get those cards. They're, they're always going, you know, they're, they're going to be around, uh, Glenn Alondra, great rare. Um, they're going to be around or Wizards is going to be, you know, in the process of maybe going to reprint them or has just reprinted them. Um, I think it would be awesome if all of a sudden it would be like, hey, if there's cards in a set, you know, you better get them because they may not come back. And, you know, hats off to Wizards. They have honored the reserve list. Uh, so if they expanded it a little bit, I think that, that I think that would really kind of just shake things up. Um, I think that I think that could be really really interesting. Uh, tell me in the comments what you guys think about that. Um, you know, do you think that would be a good thing, a bad thing? I'm not talking about putting everything on the reserve list, just like a limited amount, and then they could, uh, you know, they could they could update that, you know, kind of as they go, like every five years, you know, add some cards, um, or every three years, or every year maybe add some cards. Uh, I would like to keep I would like them to keep it kind of unpredictable, to be honest with you. I would like it to be like, hey, you know. It's not necessarily because it's the it's an oldest set. It's just going to be because we've evaluated some cards and these are cards we no longer want in the current modern, you know, meta or whatever or what, what have you. I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly how it would work, how the details have to work, but I just think it would be cool. But I could be wrong. 
All right, Phyrexian Tower. This is one of the top selling cards of the set. It's like in the top 25. It's like it's like if, if you look at the top selling cards of this set, you get all commons and uncommons until you get to this one right here. I think this is the top selling rare. So good rare. All right, all right. All right, I think it's time. What do you guys think? We have already pulled two good mythics. Uh, you know, one great mythic in Karn and one middle of the road with Krakus. I think it's time to do the box topper. Now I've gotten, gotten a lot of comments. People want, people want to see me get a lily. I would love to see that. That would be, that would be sweet. Um, really, I'm just hoping to hit like one of the top, top 10 box toppers. Let's see if we do it. Is this going to be the lily or the snapcaster? Snapcaster, snapcaster. I would really love snapcaster. It's eternal witness. Okay, um, this is this is one of my favorite box toppers because of the artwork on it, and I love Eternal Witness as a card, and it's just played all over the place. So I do love that. Um, you could definitely do it a whole lot worse than this card, but I already have two of these. <laughs> so uh, so I was hoping to get a new one, that didn't work out, but that's okay. All right, Eternal Witness is what we have. Let's throw him in on a top loader, and we're just going to move on after that. All right, so if all you were waiting for was to see what the box topper was, well, there you go. There's the box topper. So far, I think this is going to be a pretty good box, though. We've got an ancient tomb. Well, let's see. We did an ancient tomb. We got a Phyrexian Tower. Eternal Witness is our box topper. Two good mythics. Through the Breach, that's a good rare. $12 rare. That one's holding its value pretty good. Um, the rare prices have continued to sink, and a lot of them have gone down a lot further than I thought they would go. Um, I think we, you know, I hope I'm just not telling myself stories. I really hope that that's the case. I hope my thought process is somewhere reasonable. Um, I feel like people just, you know, spent a lot of money at Christmas time, uh, you know, came through the new year, made resolutions be better about things. Spent a lot of money on this sealed product. Um, you know, got hit in the end of January with Vexing Devil. This this card's an awesome card, I think. I would love to figure out a way to put this in a deck. I, I keep thinking about this, but I for for one red mana, a 4-3. Now, of course, somebody can pay for life to, to kill it, but I feel like that's like a lightning bolt at that point, or a better lightning bolt. Anyway, um... Yeah, I feel like people just, you know, kind of overextended themselves and just felt a little bit nervous, you know, feel a little bit nervous about money at the moment um, with uh, Ravnica Allegiances being re released. Golgari Charm, Maelstrom Pulse, it's our rare. So I feel like the single prices are just slipping a little bit further than they probably should. Um, I just think that people are spending their money other places right now, but I think these... I, I feel like these singles are getting ready to move. Mana Vault. Wow, three for three on great rares. Karn, Caracas, Mana Vault. So like all colorless mythics. It's got to mean something. Cool. All right, Lava Spike. That's good uncommon. All right, have we have we pulled our foil rare yet? Have we got a foil rare? Last few boxes we've opened, we've gotten two foil rares. We've gotten none in this box so far. Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. Right there, another great card. All right, we are down to our last pack. Let's see, what do we get? Resurrection foil, that's a cool looking foil. I like all those rocks blowing out from there. All right, we have Gorio's Vengeance is our last rare. I don't know that we got a foil rare. Here's all our foils right here. Let's quickly scan through. Did I miss something? Was it maybe just that unexciting? Huh. No foil rare in that box. That's very strange. Mui strange. All right, let's take a quick look here. So we have Eternal Witness back there. That's about 70 bucks. Mana Vault is 30 bucks. That makes 100. And then we have uh, 60 for Karn and 25 for Crux. That's 185. Uh, 185, we got 195. We've got 205, 210, 215, call it um, 230, 240, 
245, 250, 255, 260, 260, that's going to make 280. Wow, okay, about 295 in value there. That's with a decent box topper and good mythics. We we really kind of hit let me see here. Let's just look at these writers real fast. So there's kind of our ten dollar or more rares. I feel like we kind of missed on on some of the rares. Uh, missed demonic tutor. We missed noble high arc, and that hurt us a little bit. And no foil rare. Uh, sometimes that can that can be be a big difference. So uh, overall, good. You know, not a, not a bad box. Um, certainly, we have done a lot worse, but uh, but not a great one either. Um, all right, that's going to do it for right now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time.